हेलो नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू आई एम प्रशांत मावानी आई होप यू ऑल आर इन गुड माई डियर फ्रेंड्स टुडे इज ट्वेंटी सेकेंड फेब्रुआरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी डे इज सैटरडे टेबल वी हैव फोर आर्टिकल्स द फर्स्ट एडिटोरियल दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इज अ स्लीप एट द व्हील दिस वन इज अबाउट रोड एक्सीडेंट्स इन अवर कंट्री बट बिफोर दैट आई वु लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस ऑल ऑफ यू टू अवर पेन ड्राइव एंड टेबलेट कोर्सेस which are available for various different competitive exams you can purchase them from uh, studyiq.com portal if you have any question queries doubts regarding it uh, you can give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen dear friends uh, you can download the video of today's lecture from this two sources here please make sure that you share this lecture with other students hit the like button if you have learned something from today's discussion and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel so remember this uh, news item uh, it was uh, uh, printed on the first page of yesterday's the hindu newspaper uh, a crash that killed 19 bus passengers on a national highway now the thing is uh, it's not uh, something very rare uh, when it comes to indian roads a preliminary inquiry points to human error uh, the lorry driver slept behind the steering wheel and this is again a very common thing a very uh, common reason for accidents in our country it's very sad that uh, indian roads are most dangerous roads in the world every year look at the figure of 2018 151417 lives were lost on indian roads multiply this by 4 You can imagine just let's assume that in a family we have five members one person losing life so this accidents are affecting roughly speaking 6 lakh people isn't it or 4 lakh 50000 people when it comes to 4 lakh 50000 this reminds me of injuries right 4 lakh 50000 approximately this many people Uh, they get severe as well as uh, some sort of injuries or disabilities because of road accidents uh, so you can imagine how many family members are losing their loved ones how many family members are uh, you know getting into this vicious cycle of poverty because of this medical expenses and uh, when their bread and uh, bread and butter winner or the the bread earner person that person will you know passes away because of this uh, road accidents uh, so it's a big thing but the problem is uh, we don't take it that seriously um, neither we uh, nor our government we'll talk about it as well now 151470 roughly speaking 400 people die every day in our country so that's like every single day in our country we have uh, a boeing uh, airbus or big you know this big uh, uh, international flight getting crashed and you can imagine 300 400 people dying every day so it's is as the numbers are this big but we don't take it that seriously because they are distributed throughout our country now india has said and india is trying to bring down the road fatalities by at least uh, 50% in this 10 years and this is part of this un sustainable development goals and we have made this promise uh, nitin gadkari recently when he was at in this uh, country in this uh, uh, city stockholm right uh, he said that uh, in, um, during this uh, third global ministerial conference on road safety we said that we will uh, bring down this uh, this figures this numbers um, by 50% in in this decade in this 10 years now world bank estimates that we need 109 billion dollars in 10 years to achieve 50% reduction in road accidents now there are a few issues why we have this situation in our country there are a few things that i'm going to talk about right of course uh, there are so many things that we can talk about we can talk about this thing for for at least uh, 30 40 minutes but i'm going to be very brief here the first problem that i see is a uh, driving license it's very easy to get one right uh, the rules that we have are not that stringent um practical examination is not proper practical you have to just do one sort of eight and then you have to do a sort of in a controlled environment you have to do reverse parking and parallel parking you know it's um, incline and decline and this sort of things are very basic uh so driving means we have learned how to use vehicles i would say but we are not that good in using roads 
right we are we can say that we are good vehicle users but not road users so this is this is a big issue that i see then license is number one number two bad road users uh, then um, our construction as well as engineering standards are not up to the mark we have made some changes with motor vehicle act and we have made some changes with this new engineering standards where this contractors and engineers will be held responsible if there are uh, gray spots or gray areas or there are black spots or road if if some roads are prone to more accidents then engineers will be blamed but still when it comes to implementation we are very weak now this traffic rules and um, using road everything you know this falls uh, under the domain of uh, state governments state governments are responsible for enforcement and we see that uh, things are not that great right uh, we find it every single day in our city as well as in our town area right um, in, in most of our towns we don't have any uh, traffic signals uh, in city areas few traffic signals are working few are always on you know so people may follow may not follow it doesn't matter right nowadays they have introduced this uh, cameras and they click your pictures if you're not wearing seat belts and all these things but still every single day what happens is when when you reach a crossroad or a circle people will uh, you know they will keep their phone in their pockets or in loudspeakers and they will keep their phone on their lap and once they cross that four circle again they will be talking on their phone so things are you know it's more i would say it's all about good makeup that's what uh, when it comes to traffic rules that's what we are good at if you if you go to highways as well you find that uh, you know dividers have been broken by so many people they have like created their own man made you know gaps and you find motorcycles rather than taking a proper route what they will do is they will directly jump from between then you have animals all across on your highways so there are there is no one single answer or one single problem there are so many things that we have to do but the most important thing that i think is training right awareness proper training using vehicles why we need uh, rear view mirrors why they should be there you know some basic things wearing seat belts helmet is not for about uh, it's not for collecting fines it's more about for our safety there are so we buy expensive cars right but we are not using there I, I see so many cars very expensive cars big brands right but their rear view mirrors are are are, are closed right just with a press of button you can open them and you can use them but people are not using it uh, seat belts uh, just imagine when you go to a showroom to purchase a car and if uh, you don't find headlights uh, then you will of course not purchase that car isn't it uh, because headlights are important in the same way right uh, safety this uh, seat belts are important right uh, god forbid if 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 we come across or if we go through an accident if we if a person is wearing a seat belt then chances are that uh, he or she will get uh, uh, you know minimum injuries uh, compared to a person who is not wearing a seat belt so we are paying for it but we are not using it and when it comes to this helmet rules uh, i have a very you can say practical as well as funny as well as sad it's it's mix uh, experience of gujarat government like what gujarat government did it came out with this strict rule that uh, everyone has to wear a helmet you know this riders uh, motorcycle riders and two wheelers basically they you have to wear a helmet so people those people who were not used to with it they started purchasing helmets and uh, right after a month or something again gujarat government came out with one amendment that if you means helmet in city area is not required so there are so many people they purchased this helmet and many of them they have chucked their helmets they have destroyed their helmets they thought like it's gone forever and now i think government is again planning to introduce that rule to that you have to wear a helmet so you can from this whole this is just one example of state government but if we are not taking things that seriously now it will become very difficult for gujarat government to implement that helmet rule people are going to resist it isn't it so these are the things that are going on so i'm sure you might be having many practical experiences as well if you want to share something regarding if you think like steps that we can take to improve our our um, roads uh, safety of our roads then do share it in the comment section i would love to hear from 
uh, you guys. Uh, then uh, let's talk about uh, terror in uh, Germany. Again, this was a news item yesterday. Now you have a place called Hanau. Uh, it's a town near Frankfurt in Germany. And it is home to the largest number of immigrants from the recent uh, refugee crisis. Let's talk about recent uh, refugee crisis. We have countries like Syria. Uh, then you have uh, African nations as well. Right, so in recent past, if you go back uh, six, seven years, uh, then Syria is going under this. Uh, it's under this uh, war-like situation for nearly nine years now. Uh, yes, nine or eight, nine years now, and African countries, Saharan as well as Sub-Saharan region, you have uh, lots of uh, troubles like uh, poverty is there. Then you have this. Uh, uh, riots taking place between various different tribes. So there are so many people they are migrating towards uh, Europe because this European countries like British Raj was here in our uh, in our country India. So we find so many Indians are living in in UK. I'm not talking about the students and fresh lot. I'm talking about those people who are living there, Indians and Pakistanis and Bangladeshis who are living there for third fourth generation now. In the same way, Germany used to colonize uh, different parts of uh, Africa. So there are so many, uh, you know, African, not just Germany, but Italy and there are France and other countries. So now there are so many African uh, people as well as people from this part of the world, Syria and West Asia, they are migrating towards uh, Europe because Europe is uh, prosperous and it is more quiet and, you know, uh, it's a rich place, of course. So this people, they are going back. They are saying that you used to rule us. So this is... You know, this is the time that you you were running government in our country and now we are in severe trouble because of poverty and war, etc. So we are here and help us and things like that. So Germany absorbed, just like uh, Italy, then France and other countries, right? Germany as well absorbed so many people. Germany started absorbing uh, all those highly skilled people like doctors, PhDs and uh, engineers and teachers, etc. Doctors. Yes, I said doctors. So basically, high skilled, highly skilled people were absorbed by Germany. Now, from last few years, what we find now, racism, right? Uh, racism is something that is uh, still prevalent in, in today's world. It's just like our country. Uh, constitution, uh, if we go through constitution, then we all are equal. There is no, no one is, uh, you know, higher, no one is lower. As per our constitution, that's on paper. What about ground reality? We see in 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 our country as well. In our society, we have this uh, uh, discriminatory system still going on. Untouchability is still practiced in various different parts of our country. In the same way, racism when it comes to rules and regulations, right? It's gone. But still today, we find those ideology, those people who who hate. Uh, who hate, uh, uh, you know, people with different uh, skin color, uh, racism is, is still there. Uh, nowadays we find, uh, when I say nowadays, I mean to say that uh, from last uh, uh, five, six years, let's say from last one decade, we see this strong uh, feeling, negative feeling uh, towards uh, towards immigrant. And this place here, this, this bar that you can see, Arena Bar, and there was one more, uh, Shisha Bar. So, I think nine nine people were killed by this uh, uh, this gunman, a racist person. Uh, he took a gun and he attacked two different places. This is the person. His name is uh, Tobias. And uh, in the document, he wrote that uh, people from more than 20 countries, including Turkey and Israel, uh, should be destroyed. Uh, so, first uh, shooting took place here, then uh, second place, and then he killed... Uh, his mother and uh, himself and this is not the only case we find this sort of things pl uh, taking place in various different uh, countries of Europe if we talk about Germany then look at here uh, 2019 October uh, we saw one case in June 2019 uh, Walter uh, Luke uh, Walter Luke uh, he was a pro migrant uh, politician and he was uh, shot dead um, in his garden and the the person uh, to kill him was a far right uh, ideology person so this far right ideology 
is uh, expanding in different parts of Europe. And just a few days ago, uh, 12 men were arrested for plotting attacks on mosques. Remember 2019's uh, uh, this Christchurch attack in uh, New Zealand? Uh, so we find this sort of uh, things uh, taking place. It's, it's getting very common. And one of the main reasons is this you know, competition, that uh, this belief that these people, immigrants, they are coming into our country and they are taking away our uh, jobs. Uh, they are taking away our, they are a burden for us. And, you know, they come here and they create troubles in our country and things like that. So anti-Islamic as well as uh, anti-immigration campaigns. Uh, there are so many parties who are uh, promoting this sort of ideology. And it's very strange uh, that we find this sort of things uh, are, you know, we see this sort of incidents uh, here and there in Europe because Europe is much more advanced now. I mean, if you go back to the history of Europe, it was, it was very dark, uh, very bleak. But uh, things have changed, and it's it's uh, one of the most prosperous region. Um, literacy rate is quite high. Uh, reasonably speaking, diversity is also okay. Right? It's also good. Uh, we have uh, rules and regulations, and it's it's much more organized compared to. Asia or Africa or South America. Uh, so it's very sad that we are seeing these sort of things in uh, today's world. Then moving on to another item, very important article, let must test for a judicial cleanup order. This article is written by former chief election commissioner. So experienced person, bureaucrat, ex-bureaucrat has written this article so very important article you can download this article you can keep it as your note as well each and every single line in this article is important i will reckon you guys to go through it at least uh, three times today right i'm going to explain it to you anyway but uh, make sure that you too go through this article at least uh, three times right and if you want then you can make some notes as well there is no fixed rule for making notes so what you can do is you can the things uh, that you feel like you need to note it down you can note those things down right there is no it all depends it all depends we don't have that much time to discuss about uh, notes here but we have some videos on our uh, study iq channel if you go through our channel then you will find some um, some videos on how to make notes and things like that so Litmus test. And now, 13th February 2020, and this is not the first time that we are discussing this thing uh, earlier on as well. We have talked about this topic. Uh, remember our discussion that uh, in our country, if you have uh, this, sadly, it's very unfortunate that if you have money, money power plus muscle power. Muscle power basically means if you are a Bahubali, a, a goon type person, right? Uh, then this is a combo that can help you and means it's a success mantra uh, that that will help you win uh, election may it be parliamentary election or uh, your state legislative or serpent or grassroots level election so to curb this thing supreme court on 13th february 2020 justice rf nariman and uh, s ravindra but they came out with this very important order that uh, from now on it's not just uh, those uh, politicians or candidates, but the political party as well has to explain as well as uh, it has to clarify uh, the records or criminal records of uh, their candidates uh, on their website as well as newspapers. And they have to explain like why they have opted for this particular candidate, why they have fielded uh, this candidate who is having a criminal records now back in 2002 2003 supreme court came out with its order like uh, it made it uh, mandatory for uh, these candidates uh, to provide uh, to provide this uh, um, you know details of this uh, this candidates they have to come out with their details like they, these are the cases that are pending against them in any court of law so this step, uh, this 13th February 2020 order is a very important order. By virtue of this order, the court has also shifted part of the onus on political parties. And this is a very important thing. Are you on political parties used to, you know, when it comes to this sort of things, they used to step away or they used to, you know, uh, ostracize this sort of candidates like uh, they used to tell that uh, political parties used to come out with excuses, but now political parties, uh, you know, they will be in a fix. They, if they are fielding someone who is having criminal cases, then they have to explain. So 
I hope, I seriously hope that this thing will uh, make a difference. The sad thing is at present 43% of our members in, in Lok Sabha, they are having one or more criminal cases against them. And this thing is, uh, you know, going higher and higher. This figures, basically, 24% in 2004, 13 in 2009, 34 in 2014, and 43% in 2019 and uh, you can see a, sh a sharp rise in last uh, what 10 15 years so again it's a very dangerous thing almost half of these cases were or are for alleged heinous offenses such as murder attempt to murder rape and kidnapping we have to understand this thing as well that many a times you see this political vendetta as well like if you want to create some sort of damage and trouble then you will file a fake case against a clean candidate. So there should be a protection as well. But here the court as well as election commission is very specific. It is asking only for heinous crimes. You know, on all those heinous crimes. I mean, you have to note down all the crimes uh, that are pending against you. Or criminal cases basically pending against you. But those uh, politicians uh, should be barred. Uh, those who are in, you know, are, are, uh, are, are punished or uh, sentenced uh, for heinous crimes of course we have a system where uh, once you are means given punishment then uh, after finishing your term as well you cannot uh, uh, you cannot be in politics you cannot uh, join politics uh, for for six year so so this is a good thing uh, but still we find see 43 percent which is which is a big number nearly 50 percent isn't it so the question is, will this order change everything? Yes as well and no too. Because why we find this sort of uh, people at this place or very strong place, like they are reaching the, the temple of our democracy, that is our parliament, because of voters' behavior, right? Uh, this These candidates, they know how things uh, work. They give freebies, you find money, you find uh, liquor, drugs, there are so many things that are offered uh, before election time to 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 so many people, right? Uh, depending on their taste uh, of or what they need, this politician will supply them. Then we have a very weak, I would say, criminal justice system. Uh, when I'm saying weak, I'm saying it weak because it takes ages uh, for a case to uh, conclude. So, the best option for for local uh, local people is to to knock the doors of this local dawn right this local dawn will sort out your bread and butter issues your land and irrigation dispute resolution family owner other sort of things so this robin hood uh, sort of people they will they, you know they are getting more and more popular and i have observed this thing like uh, in in marriages or social functions uh, we know this people few people right few of them are having heinous uh, cases or heinous crime cases going on against them but then as well um you know then as well we we honor them you know we find a big crowd around them whenever they appear in a marriage or social function so this is what we like and that's the reason why they are getting stronger and stronger so let's hope that uh, with the help of this order we will find uh, a sort of a control on over this this type of politician reaching to the highest uh, place and that is a parliament uh, bihar and west bengal they are going through they will go through uh, assembly elections in near future so let's hope this order will make a difference now then we have the fourth and the last one it's about forging a new india us modus uh, vivendi now we have talked about uh, usa and india we have been talking about it from last uh, three four days and uh, so i'm not going into all those details because we have already discussed about it there are a few new points here but they are not that new Right, but still, few interesting things. So I thought, let me share it with you guys now. Asymmetrical partnership. When you have in a partnership, what you need is an ideal partnership should be 50-50. 50% your strength, 50% your partner's strength, and together it becomes 100%. So this is a well-balanced partnership. But when it comes to USA and India, of course, you know that USA is a very strong, rich country, powerful country. India is getting there slowly, but still we are far behind. Uh, so we are going to see some sort of pressure we have to you know do things uh, some things a few things that we even don't like or if we are not that comfortable then as well we have to do it because 
uh, USA is asking uh, or forcing us to do some things and this is a reality. But there are positives as well. Uh, we'll get uh, cutting edge technology, we'll fight terrorism together, uh, partnership with USA will help us uh, or give us a stability. Uh, it will help us uh, in, in stabilizing this region. I'm talking about Indo-Pacific region because uh, they say that uh, if if we don't have USA here, then chances are that, as you can see here, this is a string of uh, pearls here. China has, you know, created so many ports and so many things over here. So Chinese presence is increasing here. And to control it, we need a, we need a strong partner. Um, there was a person, diplomat, uh, Dennis uh, Cooks, he has described estrangement during this Cold War era because uh, India was a little bit tilted towards USSR. We find this sort of Kashmir issue, issue with Pakistan, with China, all these things are still going on for a very long period of time because India was not under USA's umbrella. But now things have changed, right? Uh, both leaders, Mr. Modi as well as Mr. Trump, as well as people of USA and India, generally speaking, um, you know, they are in favor of uh, good, strong uh, relationship between USA and India. And uh, so far, we have worked with each other on various different platforms. When it comes to military, for example, a foundational military agreement, we have this uh, USA export control laws. Um, you know, India is part of it, uh, non uh, NATO US allies. Uh, India is a very important player. We had the two plus two foreign plus defense ministers dialogue. Uh, we are going to import oil from USA. We are having tri-service military exercises. Then industrial security annex where we will learn from each other. More from USA we will learn. And we can develop an ecosystem where we can develop our private defense industries. Uh, so this sort of things are taking place. So it's not all that negative. But it's not 100% positive. You have to... Get ready for 25% negatives and 75% positives. So it's all about cost-benefit analysis. Then you have some news items here. Supreme Court uh, must ensure our security if road is opened, has been said by uh, protesters. Uh, Pakistan detained. Uh, I beg your pardon. Pakistan retained on a gray list of anti-terror financing watchdog. It has been given time till uh, June 2020. Uh, if things are not sorted, there are 27 action points if they are not uh, worked on then pakistan will be kept in this or will be put on this black list uh, ahmedabad mayor chairs a panel holding namaste trump event uh, bahubali's uh, kiliki this is a very interesting news item on the first page of the hindu that uh, kiliki language uh, and i was surprised to know this whole language was created for just this film so, you know, this language, you can learn it uh, from this website. So that's an interesting thing. I'm going to check it out later on. And uh, then uh, 30 squats, do 30 squats. It's part of this Fit India campaign and you'll get a free platform ticket uh, at a railway station, Anand Vihar railway station. And clamp down on Kashmir social media users to held for spreading fake and uh, fake news and rumors. And India Maldives agree to take on terrorism and radicalization. And that's everything in uh, today's uh, discussion, dear friends. Uh, Today is a Saturday, so tomorrow Sunday, so no Hindu analysis on Sundays. Uh, I'll meet you on Monday now. But of course, uh, you can check out daily financial news analysis, which will come in a few hours from now. And uh, enjoy your studies, enjoy your weekend. Uh, God bless you all. Jai Hind.